Alexa, trigger live show. Sweet. I think we should actually be live. Cheers, guys. A uh, really quick one tonight. I just wanted to mess around on the bench a little bit. Uh, long story short, I got these not too long ago. These are a pulse width modulated motor and LED controller. I think they're mo they're marketed mainly towards uh, light emitting diode uh, controllers, and the price on them was dirt cheap. You can find them in the description below, and. I've never tried them or tested them or done anything with it. So I thought, what the heck, I'll take five minutes, we'll spool it up on the bench, and let's just see what one of these can do, whether we can actually control a decent load with it or not. It's a pretty hefty little unit, actually. They're, well, I forget the specs. I think it's up to like 30 volts in. Um, I think the DC output is like 3 to, 3 to 15 or something like that, but... Uh, which doesn't really well let's just see let's just give it a go let's try cheers Dylan good to see you and with any luck well I guess we are live if we've got people showing up so what I did is I grabbed my good old 1156 light bulb from automotive industry these things were great as a dummy load you can always use this to uh, to drop a lot of current at uh, well anywhere from 12 to 15 volts so I think we'll hook that across the output and what they're labeling as motor actually here let's pull this up on the let's pull this up on the do -do 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 microscope with any luck you guys can get a look at this if we can focus maybe maybe yes I need a new microscope stand so you guys can yeah there we go not much to it oh yeah that's blown way out of proportion but large cap on the back side fairly nice little PCB again out of focus yeah it's good quality for the price. I'm actually kind of impressed. Even the soldering is not horrible. It's not bad at all. Anyway, that's the unit. Let's throw it Thanks, Dylan. Cheers, buddy. Appreciate that. All right. Let's go. And we'll take and hook a light bulb across the output and we'll use that as our load. We'll simulate that be uh, a DC motor or potentially LEDs, I think. And I actually think, I hope this thing works as good as it looks. Because it's, these are, I think might be really handy for some projects. Like, if you just wanted to, I don't know, if you just wanted to run a DC motor on the bench real quick, this would be an interesting way to do it if you had to throttle the RPM of the motor. If you just have to run it, well, by all means, you can just use a power supply. So, oh, crud. Camera problems. Camera problems. There. We will let's move the microscope. And I think what we will use is a couple of wires into the motor inputs. So well, yellow should be positive today. Why not? Because that's what we have sitting here on the bench. Red and black be gone. Yellow it is today. Actually let's double these up. Actually, no, let's double up the output. The input, we're just going to feed power in, but I think we'll hook a second set of outputs so we can hook the oscilloscope on and see what's going on and see what the see what the pulse width modulation really looks like here. So let's back those back off, and we'll just use a... These are just breadboard jumpers. You can find them in my store, linked down below, store.makeme.org. And, 
Well, apparently we're using white as ground. Because that's what we have. And the other one's going to be red as positive. From in parallel with the light. And that will allow us to tee in our oscilloscope and just take a quick look and just see how this thing performs. I have no idea. You guys are going to see it first with me. Come on. Get in there. And we'll just see how it goes. <sighs> if we don't throw it on the floor. Come on now. I'm looking at the chat over my shoulder. Big mistake. Actually, I'm just going to walk over. Hi, John. Good to see you, John. Use that same power supply, Dylan. Well, it is a darn good one. I really... Other than uh, on the channel, you maybe saw that I did have to do one repair to this power supply. There was a, uh, a solder joint, a crack solder joint issue. It was just cold solder joints right from factory. And once I fixed that, that was only only a problem like a year in or two years in. And once I fixed that, all was well. All right. We have... <coughs> Excuse me. We have wires in parallel, and first things first, let's go ahead and just, well, let's just see if it works. What did we use for coloring? We used yellow for positive and green for negative on this side. Horrible. Don't follow my example. Try and stick with colors that make sense, but all right. Power supply is fired up. We're going to set the voltage first. We'll use, uh, actually, we got to give it a little bit of amperage. And we'll bring cam. What is the malfunction? Not enough amperage. We will bring. Oh, here. Let's kill. That's interesting. There we go. Okie dokie. Let's take it up to 12 and a half. That's strange. Because we went and wired it up inverted. Silly, silly me. The in is not on the side with the cap, as you would have expected. Pay attention to the silk screening. Let's reverse that real quickly. There's no harm to this in backfeeding it through uh, in this case. There we go. That's why we the output was in proportion to the power supply and not by the potentiometer position. It was all or nothing. Which is not what we were after. The curse of the live streamer. When you're paying attention to chat, you will get it backwards 100% of the time. And what's everybody building this week? Anybody building something cool? I had some uh, interesting messages on my Facebook. I had two different people reach out looking for help with, uh, um, I don't know what you would call them, accessibility projects? Um, door opening. Well, one was a door opener uh, he wanted for his wife, who is either a paraplegic or a quadriplegic. And I said, absolutely, I will try and help out with that. And the other one was a very nice gentleman reached out to me. And uh, he is, um, unfortunately, uh, diagnosed with ALS. And I don't know what his symptoms exactly, how far progressed he is, but what he's looking for was for uh, help to do an automated solution to interface Alexa, the Amazon Alexa, oh, mine's listening now, <laughs> to uh, control his hospital bed. And I, I said, 
absolutely to that too. I would gladly be interested in trying to help out a little bit if I can. All right, now we're not messed up here. That explains why we had the strange behavior until we got up to full voltage. Let's make darn sure that I used red for positive. I did indeed. Let's go positive, negative, on. Let's go ahead. Can you see that? Yep, you can see that. Let's bring the voltage up to 12.8. Uh, yeah, should be good. Current, we do not need to control it in this case. Meh. Let's bring the course down just in case. We don't. We should not need to control it because this should be able to pulse with modulate our wonderful light bulb. And sure enough, there we go. We have pulse width modulation controlling an incandescent light bulb, which means we can do this with uh, a DC motor, no problem. It will work the same. Question is, can we do it with LEDs? So let's take a look. That's a pretty critty connection I got going on there, but it'll do. Let's go ahead and see what the scope has to say. See what this looks like and see how suitable this would be. Now, that light is on really, really dim right now, but, come on now, that's funny enough, we've actually, let's hit auto on the scope, because we're lazy, and sure enough, we're good, we can probably actually bring the scale up by one, and scale it down because the voltage is not going to change this the voltage is set by the power supply we should only be controlling the pulse width modulation here and sure enough we see the duty cycle go to basically 100 percent or close to it uh, if we hit the math functionality we should be able to see that oh, it's just slightly less than 100 percent there oh no there we go there's 100 and as we throttle it back that's actually pretty good. There's a little bit of drop off here that actually could be the adjustment of my probe. Uh, to be honest, I grabbed this probe out of the cupboard and I think it's one I've never used before. So I've probably never done the calibration on that, which only takes a moment. We could do it after, but yeah, that works really, really good. So we can throttle it back to nothing at zero amps or thereabouts. Well, we can turn it right off. It's got a nice little detent and goes right into the off position. And we can go from nothing right up to at 12 and a half volts or 2.1 amps. And that's perfect. That'll work fantastic. And you could use that for, uh, well, here we can, let's take it right down to the three volt range, somewhere around three volts and bring up the duty cycle a bit even though it's not going to light our light if we hit auto on scope in theory yeah it doesn't do very good down that low but i almost wonder yeah i almost wonder i'm gonna try something off camera i'm gonna try something off camera but all in all I am quite happy with that. I would say that makes a very healthy DC motor control. Yeah, for the price, for a couple of bucks, I think that'll work. I'm just going to turn that down. Let me catch up with you guys. Dylan, uh, just a few bucks. Not much at all. These things are quite cheap. There's a link down in the description to Amazon, and you can always buy it from eBay. As well, I do carry them in the store, uh, which is Amazon fulfilled. So, yeah, a handy little device. I got a whole bunch of them. I bought quite a few of them. Just thought uh, that would be fun to just give it a try. Again, nothing crazy here, just goofing around and hooking up backwards to begin with. But overall, <laughs> even with that, well, we learned it was tolerant to that. That is, there we go. Get a little bit more zoom on that. It's actually really fine control on that. I'm quite impressed. And yeah, I'm pretty sure if we do, judging by the the vertical here and down here, uh, I'd say that's just probe calibration. That's pro I don't think that's pr 
that's the the component that's having these tails and and heads here on the waveform. That's yeah. What the heck? That's pretty cool. Handy dandy. I think we can put that to use in some projects. What do you guys think? I am going to shut it down there. Uh, that's all I had planned for tonight, just goofing around. And that was fun, guys. I'm going to join up with you guys in a couple of days. Have a good one. Cheers.